500 students. It was a smaller place then, believe it or not. It seemed like to me that we were smaller. Uh, there'll be several themes on my speech for the 1918. One is about a story about when I came here as a freshman. Uh, the next is about Stan McGarvey and his coaches. Another theme will be about winning. Be a lot about those hated Baker University Wildcats <laughs> and uh, just team. Uh, I came here as a freshman. Uh, my life has become entwined with William Jewell down through the years. Our uh, high school football coach, Bob Fisher, William Jewell College 1951. He brought Chris Choice and I up here, uh, gave the sword, showed us around. Jim Nelson, who you first some about tonight, recruited us. It really wasn't a big recruiting thing like some of the guys, I guess, had. We got a three by five card in the mail asking us for it. So we thought we better get up here. We came to my mom and dad's 1972 Oldsmobile station. We parked up in front of Browning Hall, or Browning Gym, as a matter of fact. And uh, earned some things in that old gym. I love Brown Gym. I spent a lot of time there. I, I had work study there. Well, if you guys know what that is now, back then you you worked. When you came here, uh, or you had no money, and you came here, you worked. Uh, I worked in the athletic department, and uh, I worked for Don McCullough and Les McCullough, and a man named Maurice Burke. Maurice Bell uh, had been a cowboy. And he ran a laundry room down at Brown Gym. And I spent many afternoons with Maurice Bell uh, collecting the dirty laundry of the other players as it came in. And uh, I did my work study. I was supposed to take all the clothes and wash them, hook them back up on the the uh, hooks so that the guys they come in and get it. I knew all the basketball players, everybody came right through. Well, really, I was set back in the back while Mr. Bell did all the work because he wanted me to make sure I got my work done. And uh, I love Maurice Bell, he's a great man. And uh, Brown Gym was a great place for me. One of the great stories out. Things have changed here, I'm sure. <coughs> they had a in the basement of Brown Gym, there was a half door. And you came down the steps, half door, and then the basement was there. And we pulled up with Mom and Dad's station wagon, and Choice and I piled out and went right downstairs. We were going to get our equipment. We thought, this is college, big time stuff. You know, we'll show you around, get you some stuff. They had a room right across there, and in that room, was a pile of shoulder pads. <laughs> and I mean, it was this tall. And you went through, there was no other representative there. The Joyce and I went back there. They said, yeah, go, go pick you out a couple of pairs of shoulder pads, guys. So we went back in the room, looked at each other, <laughs> started digging through these piles of shoulder pads. I found a pair, and he found a pair. And uh, we started, started using them. About a week later, I... Uh, was playing free safety. We had a little scrimmage, and a kid named Gene Kisley ran a little draw off the middle. <laughs> and uh, I had gone to high school with Gene, and I come up and knock him so hard. I knocked the taste out of his <laughs> When that happened, it cut my left nipple almost in half. <laughs> in that day. I came in and went by that half door that day and uh, Les McCullough called me in there. I thought I was in trouble. He said uh, he had a brand new pair of shoulder pads. <laughs> Set them up on the table. Had a brand new jersey. You're going to be number 15. I earned my I earned my number wearing that old pair of shoulder pads. That's how it was when 
Uh, Dan McGarvey came when we were sophomores, and I started dating the former president of the college's daughter, her granddaughter, which was a good move. <laughs> I moved up, I married her later. Uh, another great part of Jewel in my life. Uh, the steeple out here is named after her grandfather, Walter Pope Dins. And, uh, not many of you remember him or probably even remember his name, but he was uh, very instrumental here for 20 years during the, uh, World War II until the early 1960s. I know Portugal will remember that. And uh, winning, we won a lot. We did. We won, we won when we were juniors. Um, we were lucky. We got Mark Capper, we got Randy Wepler, we got Stan McGarvey. We had uh, Bush for Bird, he could recruit. And uh, he brought two or three classes in in a row that were just you know, guys like Steve Hodges. <laughs> Marty Hensley, Gary Ainsworth. All, I mean, I don't know how many All-Americans I really played with now. There's a lot of them. Kelly Brew. I, uh, I earned, I, one of the things that I really was kind of ashamed of was I really kind of cost Jim Nelson his job here when I was a freshman. I fumbled three times on him. Running kickoffs back. And uh, Coach Nelson got fired right after, <laughs> after about 20 years. Matter of fact, thank you, Chris. I got this later that year for my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that all these years. I think sometimes I get a little crazy by myself every once in a while. You know how you do? I look over there and there's that football with that handle on it. <laughs> <laughs> By one of my teammates. <laughs> so to the 1980 team, we hated Baker. When I was a freshman, they were rated sixth in the country and we went over and beat them. Uh, they never got over that. Uh, they beat us twice pretty bad when I was a sophomore and then when I was a junior. And then... Uh, we were both pretty high-powered teams when we were seniors. And uh, they came over here, and uh, we tied them 10 to 10. And we knew we all knew Jerry Birch's name, and, uh, because he's the guy to kick the field goal with no time, barely no time on the clock. They were good. They were very good. We later played them playoffs here <laughs> and uh, early in that week they had a quarterback his name was Joe what did Kelly yeah. Kelly brought a little newspaper article from over there that said that he felt, the quarterback felt like we had were really excited about tying them and they were disappointed because, you know, they didn't win they thought they were going And we were very happy that we got or we, you know, we kicked them through the last few years. So somehow they found out that this quarterback had a real fancy talent. <laughs> yeah. His girlfriend had embroidered it. And it had a wildcat on it. It had his number on it. It had all that in it. And it was decided pretty early that week that somebody was going to get that job. Barbie's <laughs> <laughs> looking at me right now. He, 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 I know he never liked it. <laughs> anyway, first quarter, somehow, they run a play. I never thought about it. I, we talked about it before the game, and I think I tackled him. You know, next thing you know, I had this talent. <laughs> and, and I ran off the field, threw it off to the sidelines. They had to the pump. Was a, here you go. I mean, we, our sidelines went crazy. And uh, it was a big part of that game. I've been credited with that down through the years many times. Uh, I always take you credit for winning that game because But <laughs> <laughs> well, really, the guy that what happened out the honesty was uh, also that week, I had gone down to the Chief Stadium 
Dave Gundy. Dave had a sprained ankle. Damn. That's why I just ran all the time. had the trivia question there. So we went down there. David said, you want to go down there with me? I said, yeah, I'll go with you, Dave. So we went down there. They put an air splint on. New. Experimental. <laughs> didn't. So Dave didn't play the first half. And it was it was a battle. I mean, we really, when we got along with these guys, we really got along. And I'll never forget one of them. We came out at halftime and 25 rounds. And you can just see them. They had been looking for him. He had 1,400 yards. They had been looking for him. And uh, they found him. He, he found them that day, too. Two nice little swing passes out from Kelly, and we were up. And we never looked back. Very emotional. Uh, I had that towel after the game, and we we celebrated it with it. <laughs> uh, uh, the late Guy Weber, I'll never for, I'll never never forget Guy Weber with that towel. And uh, you know, as young men, we all learn, you know, to win. Uh, what it took to win, how hard it is to win, and we celebrated. We really loved each other. Most of us were sick news. There was 19 guys that started at least one game on that team. And so I was the main person. And uh, I think the, some of the reasons that that was so successful during that time, uh, we lived together. We chased the same girls together. <laughs> we, uh, we got in trouble together. And uh, we watched each other. Each other. These guys that uh, I've going in the Hall of Fame with here today. Uh, it's one of the best part, best times of my life. And uh, I've got my wife here. I, I've learned lessons here that help me in my career every day. Every day. Uh, Daryl Corley. I think of this all the time. He taught me to be agile, mobile, and hostile when I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had so much fun, Coach. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to thank you all. Jules has been a big part of my life and a big part of my family's life. I love coming here. My daughter lives in Liberty. She teaches here. My best friend, Coach Choice, still lives here. And I get to see a lot of my friends. Back here. So, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for all the great times I had. Thanks, 1918. I hope I didn't make this too personal for you guys. But I hope that all of you get a little story out of what I told. I hope you do. So, uh, good luck to all of you, and, and thanks, Coach Holly. I had a great time this weekend, and I uh, appreciate it.